Welcome to New Day Christian Center. Everyone, please have a seat. Pastor TC is out visiting another church today. Speaking truth, speaking word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So just as the Bible instructs, we must be ready in season and out. So when you're called up, just like today, you're prepared. So with that, let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house today, Father God, to receive your word, to read your word. Father God, we bind any spirit of offense that anyone may take. And Holy Spirit, I pray you use me. I am your vessel. Holy Spirit, speak through me, not my opinion, but your word, your truth. Use me, Holy Spirit. Let there be good soil for this word, for this seed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> And I specifically address the spirit of offense because some of this goes deep. And the deeper it gets, the harder the soil is. So with that being said, let's delve in. The title of today's service is Yeah But. Yeah But. And I've got a whole list of Yeah Buts. So as I read some of these off to you, one or two of them may strike home. Your offense may want to rise up, but that means it's something we need to work on. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. And these are, yeah, buts for all kinds of situations that get us in trouble, that get us into sin. Yeah, but, yeah, but, they have more money than I do. I'll tithe when I have more. Yeah, but, they're prejudiced. Yeah, but, you don't know what I'm going through. Yeah, but, I'm too old. I'm not smart enough. Yeah, but they have more money than I do. Yeah, but I'm not pretty enough. I'm not big enough. I'm black. I'm a woman. But I'm broke. I'll give when I have more. Yeah, but my great-great-grandmother was a slave. So you don't understand. Yeah, but I just don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time to read the Bible. I don't have time to make it to church. I don't have time. But when I have a chance, when I have a chance, I'll get there. Yeah, but I was adopted. I was thrown away. Yeah, but I was raped. You haven't been through it. I have. Yeah, but my mom and dad were both alcoholics, so I'm going to become one. It's in my genes. It's in my family. Yeah, but my daddy abused me. Yeah, but I'm not educated. Yeah, but you don't know what I've went through. Yeah, but you don't know what they said to me. You don't know what they said to me. I have a right. Here's a big one, church. Get ready. Yeah, but it's my body. It's my body. Yeah, but I'm not very smart. 
Yeah, but I don't believe that. Try preaching this to somebody. Yeah, but I don't believe that. God does. God gave it to us. Here's another one, church. Be ready. Yeah, but it's just. Yeah, but it's just a magazine. Yeah, but it's just a drink. Yeah, but it's just a smoke, a bump, a snort, a kiss, just a kiss. All these open up the door to the enemy. Talk to any drunk. Talk to any alcoholic. It started with, it's just a drink. Talk to anybody that's addicted to cocaine. It's just a snort. It's just a bump. Talk to anyone of the millions of people that are addicted to porn. It's just a magazine. If it's just a magazine, how come you're dealing with it 20 and 30 and 40 years later? The enemy knows what he's doing, church. Yeah, but it's just a kiss. We won't go any farther. We'll stop there. Well, but you don't understand. My wife doesn't do this for me. It's just a kiss. Well, that's just me. It's just me. When you say it's just me, it gives you an excuse and a right not to change. Yeah, but I don't believe that. I, I don't believe it. Once again, God takes it serious. God writes his commands for us, his purpose for us, his desire for us, his blueprint for us. Repent for your unbelief, church. Repent for your unbelief. Now that's just a few of the yeah buts. And if you're still dwelling on one, that's probably one you need to take to the cross. You see, everyone wants an excuse. Everyone wants an excuse to be rebellious. Because if we can just, yeah, but, yeah, but, you don't know what they said to me. How many times have you spoken with people that remember something that was said at a family reunion 30 years ago? Amen. Yeah, but you don't know what they said to me. And they hang on to that anger, and they embrace it, and they won't let it go. And when you hang on to that, when you hang on to your yeah, buts, you're in sin. Because we will not be able to stand in front of our Lord one day and say, Yeah, but God, you don't know what they said to me. God does know. Yeah, but, but God, I, 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 was, I was never given a chance. I didn't have enough money. I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't educated, God. I, I couldn't work for you because I, I didn't read very well. We've never heard Pastor TC get up here and says, well, I'm not black, so I can't preach in this community. You don't see Pastor Darlene saying, I can't preach because English is not my first language. See, we all have our yeah buts. We all have our buts. Now, how many of your yeah buts are stopping you from saying, yes, Lord? How many of your yeah buts? Yeah, but I'm this. No. You're a child of God. I'm not black. I'm not white. I'm not female. I'm not weak. I'm not smart enough. I'm not weak enough. I'm not, well, I'm adopted. I'm this. I'm this. It's all an excuse. It's an excuse to sin. It's an excuse not to let go of something and hang on to it because it gives us a right to be nasty. It gives us a right to give it back. 
gives it to gives us a right not to grow up gives us a right to think I can be mad I can say what I want because they said yeah but when you yeah but you're sticking a stake right in the ground and you're stopping your faith you're stopping God right there the Bible says we should take no offense everyone tur please turn to Luke 17 1 through 4 Jesus said to his disciples, this is Jesus talking, church, not me. <laughs> Jesus said, things that cause people to sin are bound to come, but woe to that person through whom they come. It would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around his neck than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. So watch yourselves. Does anybody have a different version of that? Okay. It would be better to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around your neck than for you to cause someone to sin. But woe to him I'm going to read the King Version, King James Version. It says, It is impossible that no offense should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. Jesus addresses offense. Leviticus 19.18 Here you go. For all those that, yeah, but you don't know what they did to you. 1918, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Amen. Amen. See, God does care. He says, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge. That means the yeah, but doesn't hold water the yeah but mm -mm. do not seek revenge do not bear a grudge we're gonna go we're gonna turn to James 3 16 I'll read it real quick for where you have envy and selfish ambition there you will find discord and every evil practice. Same thing we addressed earlier. You've got people that can remember something someone said to them 20 or 30 or 40 years ago, and you've got discord, you've got evil practice, all of that running through families, friendships, workplaces, Jealousy and self-ambition. There will be disorder in every vile practice. What does jealousy start, church? It starts when you want something you're not supposed to have. Hallelujah. As we've addressed the yeah buts, I'm going to tell you what the yell butts are. They're an excuse. And I'm going to read the definition of excuse. To regard or judge with forgiveness or overindulgence. To pardon or forgive. To overlook a fault, an error. To offer an apology for. And here's, here's the third and the fourth, and they're my favorite. 
An excuse is to seek a removal of blame. Or last, to justify. See, you give me an excuse. If I have an excuse, I'm justified. I'm justified in my, my behavior. I'm justified in my evil behavior. I can remove the blame because, God, it's not me. It's them. They made me do it. That wife of mine. <laughs> that wife of mine. She did it. I think of that. How many people stand on an excuse? How many people stand on a yeah but? And they feel justified. They think it removes the sin from them and it doesn't. You've just picked it up embraced it and you're carrying it through life God says let it go repent 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 because church when it comes down to it we want it an excuse to sin we do it gives us a reason to be ugly well once again you don't know what they said to me you don't know what they did to me well they did this God they did this when we use yeah but, we are making excuses for us to sin and not to fulfill the will of God. Amen. I'm going to say it again. When we use yeah but or an excuse, we are making excuses for us to sin and not to fulfill the will of God. An excuse is just another chain of bondage that the enemy uses against us. We can call them excuses. We can call them habits. That's just me. We can even call them a lifestyle. Whatever we call it, it's causing us not to fulfill the will of God. It's only a small thing, it's no big deal. It's only a little white lie. The yeah but is the doorknob to hell. Yeah but, the next thing that comes out of your mouth is going to be sin. Yeah but, because it's unforgiveness. You're justifying sin. You're justifying a reason to misbehave, to sin, to act out, not to grow up. I had someone telling me they were trying to share the Lord with a neighbor about a month ago. This is a 70 plus year old woman. And this woman's trying to share the Lord. And the 70 year old woman says, well, I tried to go to church when I was like 13, but uh, we didn't have any family, or we didn't have any money and um, they wouldn't give us something and even though my mother was there every Sunday and tithes and no I just I can't get into church 60 years she's held on to that that grudge that hate that anger and what's it done the yeah but they treated us this way yeah but yeah, but kept her out of church for 60 years, and she's defending it. She's defending her action. Think about how sneaky the enemy is. He knows our spots, church, just as God knows. The enemy studies us. He watches us. He knows where our chinks in our armor are. And we yell and scream and yeah but, yeah but, yeah but. He just draws a big target on it. And he knows. You're just like a road map. All I got to do with her, she talks about her hurt all the time. She talks about it and justifies it. The enemy doesn't have to look very far. He can let you go months at a time and then all of a sudden, oh, just poke that same button again. Remember when they said that to you? Remember? When she did that to you, oh, you don't have to forgive. You don't have to treat her. You don't have to forgive. Right. 
remember, yeah, but. We want an excuse to be ugly. Here's a big one, church. We want to find a church that says it's okay to be ugly. It's okay that you have an opinion. It's okay. We must forgive. Matthew 6.15 says, But if you do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive yours. Again, but if you do not forgive others for their sins, your Father will not forgive yours. Jesus is addressing that. You don't have a right. You don't have... You don't have a right to sin, to not forgive. When you don't forgive, this is the doorway for the enemy to get a toehold into your life. And here's, here's the opener, church. When you don't forgive, you open the door by not forgiving. Amen. You opened it by not forgiving and being rebellious. Don't blame them. No. Nope. God will deal with them. You opened it up by saying, no, I will never. And I've spoken with people. We've all spoken with people. Says, well, I, I can't. I can't forgive. I, no, I won't. You walk them through that. You have to. No, I can't. That's a choice. They have dug their heels in. They've dug their heels in and says, I'm being rebellious. I'm doing it right here. I'm doing it my way. And nope, I can't. I refuse. I refuse to forgive. I refuse to let them get away with that. How many of us take it upon ourselves to go fix it? How'd that work out for Abraham and Sarah? <laughs> taking it in your own hands. Well, I'll fix it. I'll make it right. Be careful with that, church. Nothing done in strife or anger is of God. You can say you're justified. You can say they did something to you. You have a reason. Nope, God didn't honor that. Nothing done in strife and anger is of God. And here's the thing too, church. We've all been hurt. There's not a person in here that hasn't been hurt by someone. But we do not adjust the way we act because of someone else's sin. We don't. We don't adjust our actions. We don't adjust our responses because someone else sinned. All of those are excuses. Now we can call them excuses, we can call them habits, lifestyles, little white lies, but let's call them what God calls them and that's sin. You see, we make excuses for everything. If we make excuses for everything, we will never repent because we'll feel justified. And that's why we have to repent. And the Bible tells us we're going to look up some scriptures here in a minute over and over and over and over. Repent. Because if you don't repent, if you don't repent, you make excuses. You don't have to repent. You feel justified. Now, out of all the yeah buts, if some of them grabbed you, your skin's still a little bristling because of it, or you're just flat out in the spirit of offense. Tell me about the yeah but when you're standing in front of the Lord, is the yeah but going to work? Yeah but. You are standing in front of God Almighty. But God, you, you don't know what he said. You don't know what he did. God, you don't know. God knows. And that excuse is not going to work. That excuse... That you, that line that you drew in the sand that you says, no, I'm not going to forgive. Jesus addresses that about forgiveness. You have to forgive, church. It's not an option. 
It's a command. You have to forgive. The yeah, but, the yeah, but, it's a platform to excuse the flesh. It gives you an excuse to sin and not forgive. The second you fail to forgive, you shut the door to God. You step up and you open it up to the enemy. Amen. Now there are people that thrive on rebellion. I have, to, I have to say this again because it's so important and I don't want you to miss it. If you make an excuse for something, you'll never repent. Lady Gaga has a song. I was born that way. The song is the latest anthem for the homosexual community. The reason homosexuals are rarely delivered, rarely delivered, is because they never acknowledge their sin. They don't, they don't acknowledge it. They say, I was born this way. My heart breaks for these people, church, and all of ours should, not to compromise in a loving manner, telling the truth. I was speaking with a sister last week about this very issue. It's easy to go along with the world, and that's what the enemy wants. He wants everyone just to get along, to coexist, to make every sin feel okay, to tell everybody it's okay. It's easy to be that person. It's easy to agree to be the agreeable one. It's hard to be the one that speaks the truth because then the hate speech comes out. I'm not speaking hate. I'm speaking truth because I'm the only one bold enough to tell you the truth. When you are that bold, what do you think? People are going to take offense. They may walk away completely out of your life. But they can't stand in front of the Lord one day and say, no one told me. And I've talked to people about Jesus, about our Lord and Savior. And they flat out said, well, I don't believe that. I've told them. You can't stand in front of God one day and say, no one told you. I didn't do it out of, love, out of hate. I did it out of love. I didn't do it out of, I told you so. I told them because I want to see them in heaven one day. We all have those people in our lives that don't believe anything we say about the Lord, possibly even mock us, and that's okay. It's hard to be the one that speaks truth. It's hard to be the bold one that speaks, nope, homosexuality's wrong. Many of the body of Christ is compromised, and if you don't believe it, open up the word. But the reason homosexuals are rarely delivered is because they never acknowledge their sin. They think it's okay. They think it's a lifestyle. It's sin, church. That's what the Bible says, not me. When we compromise, it means we do not stand. God says, no one comes to the Father except through Jesus. No, there is not more than one way to heaven, Oprah Winfrey. No, my God is not Allah. It's not Buddha. It's not Mother Earth. My God is Jesus. And if you do not know this, know it, stand firm, you'll compromise. What does the Bible says? My people perish for lack of knowledge. Because nobody really opens this and reads it and meditates on it and prays. How many times do you talk to Christians that have never even read God's Word? They may start out 
as new believers and read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, by about the time they're in the fifth or sixth Bible, they've given up. They're tired. They don't understand it. It's not worth it. Well, whatever. I know you believe all that stuff, but my opinion, let me tell you about my opinion. God don't give a rip about our opinions. As I tell people all the time, there's no book of Teresa in here. I've looked and looked, and it's not in there. There's no book of Tony or TC. Nope. God don't care. This is the directions. This is what we go by, not our opinion. <clears throat> Jesus was delivered over from death of our sins to death from our sins not because of hiccups nor issues nor other words that the world uses to trivialize sin. I visited a church one time and they referred they never even said the word sin they talked about hiccups little hiccups well, you know, we all have little hiccups. They never said sin. Because if you don't call it sin, you don't have to repent. Again and again, if you don't call it sin. Well, it's issues. Well, it's something that's run in our family for years. Alcoholism. We have to acknowledge our sin and repent. If you don't, the blood of Jesus can't cover it. We have to acknowledge our sin so that the blood of Jesus will cover it. In order to do that, we must acknowledge our sin. We must act. We must act, and when I say act, we must vocally ask for forgiveness. Acknowledge that it's, that it's sin. Ask for forgiveness. How many times have we all heard, Lord, change me. Well, if Lord wants me to do that in my life, he'll change me. Well, if God wants that done, he'll change me. God, change me. No. God says you change. You do it. You nail your sin to the cross. God wants us to do our part. He gives us directions and he says, do it. You forgive your enemy. You repent. See, people don't even want, they want the blessings of God, but they don't even want to do the work. They don't want to read and find out where your blessings are. They don't want to repent and acknowledge their sin. And they sure don't want to ask forgiveness because of pride. Everyone, please turn to Matthew 3, 2. I'll start with Matthew 3, 1. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the desert of Judah, Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom is near. Repent. Turn a page over. Matthew 3.12 His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor gathering the wheat in the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Amen. Repent of your sins and turn to God for the kingdom of heaven is near. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Repent, church. Matthew 4, 17. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent! For the kingdom of heaven is near. Hallelujah. Repent. Keep turning over to Mark 6.12. You think Jesus is trying to tell us something? Amen. 
Mark 6, 12. They went out and preached that the people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Continue to church, return church. Luke 13, 3. I'm going to read 3 to 5. This is Jesus talking. I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Of those 18 who died when the tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. One more, we're continuing to turn. Go to Acts 3.19. Pastor Darlene preached this one earlier. Three nineteen. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Christ whom has been appointed for you even Jesus. At the top of your page, we're still in Acts, Acts 2.38. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The, pro the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all who the Lord, your God, will call. And last one, Romans 4.25. He was delivered over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Church, it doesn't say he was turned over for our issues, our hiccups, our opinions, our excuses, our yeah buts. He was delivered over to death for our sins. Our sins. And we have to acknowledge our sin before you can repent. Amen. You have to acknowledge it. You talk about church. When I speak to people, I run into, especially at work, I talk about church. Do you go to church? What church are you a member of? And one of the first questions I always ask is, are you getting fed? And some people look at you like you have five heads. And I say that because you have to get fed in church. Pastor talked about this last week. The more comfortable we make church, the more asleep the church is when Christ comes back. If you're going to church, because I talk to people, they're like, oh, I love my church. I love my church. It's great. I said, okay, well, tell me a little bit about it. Well, I go to church every Sunday and I just, I leave feeling so good. <coughs> well, church, I don't know, but that's a red flag to me. Eventually, you should go to church and something should make you, put you in check. Amen. Something should get your attention and even bristle you. Maybe even a fence start to rise up. I say this because when Pastor Tony and I first started coming to this church over six years ago, I was raised in a Baptist church, so I can speak freely of the Baptists. As Pastor says all the time, it's funny, Baptists know how to get you saved. 
I was saved in a Baptist church. But it stopped. I'm not saying all Baptist churches are this way. I'm speaking for my Baptist church and many people I've spoken to who've also attended a similar church. I was saved. I love the Lord. But it stopped right there. When I got my salvation, I thought I had plateaued. I thought that was it. I am saved. I love Jesus. I am saved. And I was. But I didn't get any food. I didn't get any correction. I didn't get anything after that. It was the same sermon every Sunday about salvation. And I never grew. I didn't know any better. I thought I had hit the top rung. I was saved. That's it. That's all I needed. And I went on a couple of years being saved, loving the Lord. And the first shiny thing, the enemy waved at me. Off I go. Because no one prepared me. No one prepared me for the battle. No one said anything. There was no such word as spiritual warfare. You didn't sure say the D word, demons. None of that's addressed <coughs> in the Baptist church. It wasn't in mine. Salvation, salvation, salvation. Praise God. I got saved there. But that was my issue as I never grew. I loved the Lord. My, my love for the Lord never stopped. But I got out into the world and got beat up to smithereens and the more I was out in the world the church became farther and farther away and I didn't go to church for years love the Lord but here's the sad part I didn't think I needed to how many people do you hear saying well, I, can, I, can, I can praise the Lord in the bass boat I can do it in my living room I don't have to go to church yeah you, you can but you never get correction you never get rebuked you never really get the word because you're getting it with your very juvenile understanding instead of coming and putting yourself under a man of the Lord or a woman of the Lord. Pastor Tony and I talking to, uh, or he was talking to one of his friends who had recently been saved on fire for the Lord, but never would get into church and submit himself to a man of the Lord. And you think about how important it is to be here. Think about how much correction you have gotten since you've been here. Back to when we first started coming to church because I went and played out in the world for years and loved the Lord but just getting beat up by the enemy. So Pastor and I, Tony and I started coming to this church about six years ago, and we laugh about it, about how mad we left every Sunday. Mad! I don't mean a little mad. I mean mad. Oh, just mad and all bristled up because Pastor had his shears, and he was coming along, and he was snipping all those branches off, and some of them hurt. But we kept coming back. And I tell people, because I've experienced this, when you start your growing process, when you really start growing, is when you start getting these things cut off of you, just like the Bible says, pruned, when we're pruned, and we come back. How many people go to church? How, how many people go to church, and first thing they do is they go to church, and the pastor says something that upsets them and they never come back. Oh, well, you don't know what they said. Well, he said this. Oh, I don't like, I don't believe that. Off they go. That's when you get to that crossroads, church. That's when you come up and you say, I'm going to grow or I'm going to go find a church that makes me comfortable. If you're going to a church every Sunday that you feel wonderful and cotton candy and everything's great, I'm going to say you're probably not getting fed. You're getting petted. You're getting lulled to sleep. Lulled to sleep. Just like we said before. If you got a comfortable church, what do you do when you get comfortable? When you go to sleep, you relax. 
you relax and you fall asleep. Yes. That's today's church. They're entertained a little bit at the beginning to keep them in the door and then the lull comes down and they go to sleep and they leave the same way they come in. Yes. Because I encounter this time and time again at work on Mondays when I talk to people and I try to ask them about their service on Sunday. Oh, it was good. It was good. It was so good. <laughs> well, tell me about it. Well, it was good. What did you learn? Well, it was good. They, they can't. They can't tell you what it was. It was just good. It was great. And they go back every Sunday. And that's why these people sit in pews 20 and 30 years and are the same as when they walked in 20 and 30 years ago. If you haven't grown, church, there's an issue. But that's what, it, that's what growing up is. It's when you go into church and the pastor, the word, starts pruning on you start getting things snipped and sometimes they hurt they hurt I can't tell you I was saved for many many years before I came to this church and I can't tell you the screwed up thinking I had when I walked in this door because I still was it's my opinion and it's my body and it and it hurts my heart to think that I walked around so many years thinking wrong in rebellion because I truly believed it's my body no church it's God's body Amen. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made yes, hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah and I submit to Jesus and I am God's vessel but just as that was a heavy burden on me I had to let go I had to make that decision it was presented to me pastor always says and I love it uh, who said that what one pastor no that was Jesus Jesus said that you got a problem take it up with Jesus don't be mad at pastor and that's true Amen. Jesus said it Amen. Jesus said it we have to know God's Word because I walked around in blindness and silliness and rebellion and was getting my rear end kicked for years until I came to a house of the Lord with a pastor that spoke truth, not some, one that pets me to sleep, that makes me feel good, that gives me cotton candy, that tells me everything's okay and all roads lead to heaven. Well, it's okay. God knows your heart church we got to wake up we got to wake up God addresses it over and over and over again repent 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 we have to acknowledge our sin acknowledge what it is don't call it a hiccup it's not an issue it's not a phobia it's not an excuse it's not how many things does the enemy call just an excuse well you have this fear you have this phobia you have this take a pill go to the shrink and I do find it funny on how many Christians want to go to a worldly counselor who are going to go speak world knowledge into you instead of God knowledge into you why would you listen to anyone that's not speaking God's Word Amen. I don't care who they are Amen. I don't care how many certificates they have on the wall I don't care mama granny husband wife I don't care who it is if they're not speaking this they're in error because they're speaking out of opinion they're speaking out of their beliefs but it's all a lie compared to God's Word so church with all that said you don't have an excuse we're not going to be able to stand in front of our God one day and say yeah but we're not going to be able to stand in front of God one day and say you don't know you didn't understand because God knows and God understands and God says, you repent, you forgive.
That's what we have to do. That's all for today. Thank you, church. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.